everybody. We have a few new visitors this morning. My wife being one of them. <laughs> Welcome back to the River from Spanish Wells. Good to see you. And good. Good to see you. And Dr. Linda Lightman. Welcome back. And the notice is you'll notice that we have a few there. We have for the Leroy Archer at home, as he recovers. We had a fall some weeks ago. My brother, I have a little bit of a good Samaritan home. But the place he is, he still awaits going away. But you know, the COVID 19 problematic system we have now. Nobody knows what to do, when to do. And Reverend Charles and Sharon Sweeney at home, remember them? And Diane Malone was admitted to the hospital because she was very late in a pregnancy, but they, just precautions they wanted to do for her. She's in the hospital. Diane Malone, we pray for her and her family at this time. Any others known to us that we should be praying for? Pray for our country as we go through this time. As you know, we've had more cases in the last two weeks. And we're going through a very trying time. We hope we don't have to keep out the cases to where we have to shut down on the game. <laughs> so we pray that you know, these situations can be handled in the right way. And we pray for those in their families who's recovering. We know that a lot of people are just afraid to do different things that they're not used to being at home and shut in and such. So we pray for our church family. Those who can't come out, who could listen by way of media. This what's happening. Facebook, etc. is being recorded for that reason so we can send that to them during this time. Now we stand for a call to worship. We remain standing until we finish the doxology when we sit for the prayer for us. Our call to worship is printed on the board. I waited patiently on the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the fiery clay and set my feet on the rock. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see the fear and put their trust in the Lord. Many, O Lord my God, out of the all of the wonders you have done, the things you planned for us, no one. Can we come to them? Did you hear to speak and tell them that they would be too many to declare? We're going to stand for a quote, place there. Number one and 15. It's broken to this morning. And once he goes to the sky, my heart will wake him in Christ.
crucified and died in his grave. He descended into Hades. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. knowing that you are a God of covenant 
and that you watch over your word and perform it. You say that you will never leave us nor forsake us, and to believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Help us, O Lord, to continue earnestly in prayer and supplication, and teach us to look inwardly and reflect on our sins, bitterness, anger, fear, loss of hope, and not trusting in you. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. For my peace I give you, I do not give to you as the world gives. Father God, as we embark into a different season where there is a reset, a shaking and a shifting taking place, show us how to navigate. Continue to intervene into our affairs and in the world to save humanity. Give our leaders and those in power of influence new strategies to reset and to rebuild a divine economy. Help us, Lord, to show more love for you and for our fellow men, to dig deeper in you, to help bring salvation, restoration, and hope for your people, especially those who are hurting at this time, those who are experiencing brokenness, those going through, those who are in need and the underprivileged, help us, Lord, to show compassion and empathy without judging. As most of us continue to press through this difficult time, continue, Lord, to give us a positive attitude and allow the fruits of the Spirit to manifest even in a greater way. Help us to know that adversity will strengthen our resolve and give us courage to face whatever storm may come our way. Draw us closer to you, Lord, so that you will get the glory. And the God of all grace, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Hallelujah. As we pray, Lord, I speak divine protection over each and every one connected to this church family, every household, every child, our belongings, our businesses, and our jobs in Jesus' name. For you have not given us a spirit of fear, but you have given us a sound mind. Father God, touch your people today in a powerful way. I decree and I declare divine healing to take place, miracles to manifest. I speak deliverance and I speak rejuvenation in the name of Jesus. Let there be a spirit of revival. Break out of our hearts today in Jesus' name. From today, Lord, we will never be the same and we release the blessing of God and favor upon everyone, O oh God, here today, in Jesus' name, we pray, amen. <laughs>
auditory him. I just want to say, how many here for the first time since we started church? <coughs> Welcome. It's good to have you. It's good to be here in the Lord's house on the Lord's day. You know, through all this pandemic, the only thing you can do is really trust. <laughs> trust and have faith. And that's what this song is. The next song is going to sing out. Officer Yen remains here to stand the last verse. Officer Yen is simply trusting every day. Chapter 
nakedness or danger and death. It is exactly as the scriptures say. For you, we face death all day long. We are like sheep on their way to be butchered. In everything, we have won more than a victory because of Christ who loves us. I am sure that nothing can separate us from God's love. Not life or death, not angels or spirits, not the present or the future, and not the powers above or powers below. Nothing in all creation can separate us from God's love for us in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you. I want to thank everybody that participated in the service this morning. And that's what we were thinking of them. We stare and stare and let's follow us together. We stare and stare all the time. Good job, Matthew, that this was fun. You know, Sister Linda was away for so long time. <laughs> so when she finished playing this election, we got to give a big round of applause. She took out her back, Sister Linda.
not only is Santa Anita happy to have a bank, I am as well. <laughs> thank you, Lenka, and thank you to all of you who have ministered to us in various ways on this glorious Lord's Day morning. As I look out over the congregation, I notice that the numbers are increasing somewhat, and we are thankful and grateful for your presence here with us, Sunday after Sunday. And those who are not able to be here as yet, believe me, they do want to be here. But out of an abundance of caution, they're still waiting until they feel the time is right. So welcome you all again to our Lord's house. And thank you for these glorious moments of worship and fellowship that we have been able to share together. This morning we're considering life challenges. So I've entitled our study, A Consideration of Life's Challenges. A look at life's trials. Please bow with me for a moment of prayer. We're grateful, loving Lord, that you have allowed us to be here this morning on this wonderful Lord's Day morning. Thank you for having brought us to this point and to this time, for having watched over us over the days and hours of the week that is now behind us. Thank you for the presence of each one and the contribution of each one given in various ways this morning. Be with us now in these moments of meditation as we focus upon your word, a word which is everlasting but also ever-living, timeless, but so very timely. I pray now the word inspired by the Spirit will be for us in these moments the word imparted through the Spirit. To the glory of your name, we pray. Amen. In recent conversation with a person facing some challenges, it was said, wouldn't it be wonderful if life were all smooth sailing from our birth to our departure. Why do we have to face and go through the difficulties, the trials, and the challenges of life? Why is there pain in our world? Why do people, especially Good people suffer in life. Why do bad things happen to innocent children? Why was a young 10 year old student shot and killed recently? Why do natural disasters such as a Dorian happen? Why is there a pandemic like COVID 19? which is wreaking havoc on so many lives and families in some 188 countries of the world. Admittedly, we don't have to live very long to discover that life, while it brings its joys, its successes, its happiness, sunshine, blessings, and good times, it also brings its pain, its sorrow, its suffering, and its difficulties. Perhaps the issue is not that these things happen, because we know they do. But how do we respond? How do we react to them when they do happen in life? The text this morning for our consideration 
give us three responses or attitudes and reactions to the adversities, the trials of life that we face. The first one is found in Genesis chapter 42 and verse 36. And in that verse which says, All things are against me. We have the attitude of the victim. Then secondly in Romans chapter 8 and verse 28 where the Apostle Paul tells us, we know that in all things God works for our good. We have in that verse the attitude, the view of a visionary who is able to see beyond the now the present. And then in Romans chapter 8 verse 37, words of Paul again, in all these things we are more than comfortable. There is the view of the victim. So we want to consider these this morning. First of all, the view or the attitude of the victim. This is the feeling of a defeatist. The view of one who feels like a victim. One who has been defeated, as it were, by life circumstances. This is seen in Jacob's words in Genesis 42. And verse 36, all these things are against me. In today's language, Jacob was saying, everything seems to be going wrong. Life is falling apart. The bottom has fallen out. Let's consider the context in which Jacob spoke these words. At this point in Jacob's life, he is facing some heartbreaking, challenging, and changing circumstances. His beloved son, his favorite son, Joseph, by wife Rachel, was reported by his brothers to have been killed by wild beasts. Jacob is deeply bereaved. And cannot be consoled. He lamented, My gray hairs will go down to the grave in sorrow and in mourning. In addition to the loss of his son, Joseph, as it was reported to him, a terrible famine has now come upon the land, and the land is being ravaged by this famine. He is concerned about the survival of his family because their food stuff is running out. And so he sends his sons down to Egypt to secure food. And upon their arrival, they are accused of being spies. They are brought before the Prime Minister, the leader, and questioned. And his sons are then told, in order for you to secure food, you must leave one of your brothers, Simon or Simeon. He must remain behind in prison. And you must go back to the land of Canaan and bring your youngest brother Benjamin back with you. It seems like life for them has been totally upended. So they return to the land of Canaan and they share with their aged father what has happened. And as Jacob reflects on all that seems to be happening in their lives and within the family, he said to them in Genesis chapter 42 and verse 36, You have bereaved me of my children. Joseph is no more. Simeon is in Egypt. And now you want to take away Benjamin? And he cried, All these things are against me. Life's tragedies have overtaken me. You know, there are others in Scripture who identified with Jacob in this aspect. Moses. When the people rose up and rebelled against him, he said, Lord, I have had enough 
I cannot deal with this congregation any longer, this congregation of Israel. Take my life from me. He was facing a moment of deep discouragement and depression. Elijah, the great prophet, after having prayed down fire from heaven, and after having faced the prophets of Baal, was threatened by Queen Jezebel. He fled, and in tiredness and exhaustion and in deep depression, under a tree, he prayed that his life would be taken from him. He felt he wanted to face life no longer. And Job, in the midst of his flaws, his suffering, despised the day of his birth. And said, man is born to trouble as the sparks fly up. As he tried to make sense of all that he seemed to be going through. The loss of his children and one fell swoop. His servants, all his possessions, and then his physical health. Yes, there are times when we face or go through life adversities and challenges that we feel like it. Everything seems to be going contrary to what we had hoped or expected. Everything seems to be against us. And we feel a sense of helplessness. And maybe at times, even that we have been forgotten by God. The psalmist in Psalm 13 seemed also to have felt that way when he wrote these words in verses 1 and 2. How oh, long? How long? How long? How long? Have you forgotten me forever? Won't ye see and understand? All the things that I've been going through. No doubt there are persons in this time of COVID-19. All of us to some degree or another have been impacted by this pandemic. But perhaps there are those particularly who feel because of the way things have turned out or are turning out. And life seems at this moment to be against them. But ah, all was not as it seemed. Because Joseph was still alive in Egypt. And not only was he still alive, but he was now second in command in Egypt, the Prime Minister. Simeon and Benjamin were also well, and they would soon rejoin the family in the land of Canaan. Now, according to Genesis chapter 45, verse 27, after Joseph revealed himself to his brothers, When they returned to the land of Canaan and told their father that Joseph was indeed still alive. And when their father saw all the foods that Joseph had sent back to the land of Canaan and the car which he had sent to bring the entire family to the land of Egypt, we read that Jacob's spirit revived within him. It's the image of a tree that seems to be wilting and dying. And when some rain comes, it suddenly springs to life again. And it's revived. Jacob's spirit revived. When he received the news that his son Joseph was not only alive, but he was in the land of Egypt as the prime minister. And he discovered that even in the most painful and darkest moments of life, God was still at work. And eventually, the light begins to shine through to him. As Paul tells us, at times we see darkly through a glass. 
But then we shall see and know as we are seen and know. So we see, first of all, the attitude, the view of the victim. All these things are against me. Let's move now to our second point given to us in Romans 8, 28. And here we have the view, the attitude of the visionary. In the second text, we have the view of one who is able to see beyond the present, beyond the now. It's a view of confidence and certainty. Romans 8, 28, perhaps one of the most often quoted verses in Scripture. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him and who have been called according to His purpose. The Apostle gives us a sense of certainty and confidence. Notice he does not say, we hope or we think or we feel that all things will work for good. But we know. And his certainty stems from the one whom he came to know and with whom he had walked for all those many years. Of what is the Apostle Paul certain or sure? That all things work together for good. Now that's an amazing statement. And for many, many years, when I began the Christian ministry, I wouldn't preach on that tax. Because there were so many realities in our world and the lives of individuals that this tax didn't seem to be borne out. But here he tells us, and we know that all things, and all means all. He doesn't say some things, most things, the good things, the pleasant things, the happy things, the loving things. No, he states all things. Everything that may transpire in our lives. God has a way of turning it around for our good. The negative and the positive. Our trials as well as our triumphs. Our successes and our setbacks. Our mountains as well as our valleys. The painful and the pleasant. Everything that comes our way. God will eventually work for our good. We may not see it at the moment. But you will. Now it's important to notice here that Paul doesn't say all things are good. <laughs> but he says all things work for our good. Because we know that all things in life are not good. There are some things that cause us to weep, to mourn. There are some things that break our hearts. There are things that are painful and hurtful, distressing, and challenging to our faith. But he tells us that somehow. God is able to take all of these things and when He brings them all together, He is able to make them work for our good. If you take a cake, think of all the ingredients that go into making a beautiful carrot cake or palm cake or whatever cake that you want. If you were to take the ingredients and try and eat them individually, we couldn't stomach them. 
But when we take them all and put them in a bowl and mix them together and stick them in the oven, after 45, 50 minutes, a beautiful, scrumptious, tasty cake comes out. Because all the ingredients have been mixed together. And they produce a beautiful cake at the end. Joseph, after he went through all that he did, you remember when he revealed himself to his brothers, they tried to flee from his presence, but he said to them, Come close to me. I am your brother Joseph. And they gave him these words. He said, You may have meant it for harm, for evil, but God has turned it around for my good. Because He has sent me before you so that all the land, all the lands in, around Egypt will be provided for during the famine. As we're going through COVID-19 at the moment, it may seem like, wow, how do we get through this? What will the end result be? But I am convinced that through it all, at the end of it all, He will bring the positive. From what seems to be so negative, so distressed, so distressed, Behind our eyes the weaver stands and works his wonderful will. We leave it all in his all wise hands and trust his perfect skill. Should mystery enshroud his plan and our short sight be dim, we will not try the whole to scan, but leave each thread. All these things are against me. The attitude, the view, the victory. We know that all things, God works for our good. The attitude, the view of the visionary. Finally, Romans 8, verse 7, we have the attitude of the victor. This is the attitude of the conqueror. The one who refuses to be defeated, though he or she may be knocked down. In all things, Paul says, we are more than victors through the one who loved us. You know, we all love victors. We all love victors. Those who refuse to be defeated, the all the odds may be stacked against them. They hang in there and they plow through. They stick with the stuff in spite of all that they might be facing. Morning of September 30th, 2000, the Sydney Olympics. Thousands of the Hindians stayed away to witness live the running of the 4x100 meter relay in which the Golden Girls, remember them? The Golden Girls, to a run. The Golden Girls, L.D.'s Clark Lewis, Sandra Stella, Pauline Davis Thompson, Serafina Fines, and Debbie Ferguson were up against fierce and stiff competition. They were competing against very strong contenders for the goal, contenders such as the USA, Jamaica, Germany, Great Britain, Nigeria, Russia, Ghana, Greece, Madagascar, and the Ukraine. But those golden girls entered the race with the conviction that they could take down such contenders even as Mary and Jones. They walked away with the goal. They believed that they could be conquerors and champions. And on the final leg of the relay, 
as Marion Jones was closing in on Paul, Paul, it seemed like she received a sucking wind, and all of a sudden she started moving toward the finish line. And she crossed the finish line several strides <clears throat> ahead of what was believed to be the strongest runner at that time. And after she crossed and the team won the goal, this is what she said as she was being questioned. We know that we could win. Yes, the Bahamas, a nation of some 235 individuals, Against the mighty, powerful U.S. of A, a nation of over 260 million, and all the other powerful contenders. This morning, we may have faced some battles and some struggles in various realms and spheres of life. We may have felt like we've been knocked down by this COVID-19 situation. And perhaps there are those who may feel, I'm dying for the count. But you're still here. We are still here. And I want to encourage us this morning to keep fighting, to keep moving, to keep the goal in mind, keep the prize in mind. With God's help, we will win. We will get through this. Amen? Amen. We will. Amen. And get through it better. On the other side, I close with these words. It is more of us than be with him. We are on the winning side. With battles of the world, we will tell the whole world that Jesus is our captain and God. There's none to fear when he is near. Though fears for conflict may be, we'll never give in. The fight against him, for with Christ, there is victory. In all these things, we are more than comfortless. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time of worship this morning. As we have assembled ourselves in your presence on this Lord's day, continue to bless and strengthen and encourage and uplift and empower you the days that are before us, knowing more that we're not alone, but the captain of our salvation, the one who has already won the battle, has gone before us. But not only that, he is with us. And if we step through, receive our gratitude, our appreciation, and our thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus, your Son, we pray. Amen. Amen. We have been filled mm -hmm. after a while and empty ourselves with God's presence. The infinite is 603, but it's 503. 503. God moves in a mysterious way.
Lord some time this week. It's been such a joy and delight. Uh, Mr. Ernest and his dear wife Carmen and Katie. <laughs> Send them with our enemies of prayers and God's richest blessings as they go and try to re-establish themselves there in Africa. Thank you for having been with us. Let us know that our prayers and love and for Let's receive the benediction. Now unto him who is able to keep us from stumbling, and who will one day present us faultless. For the presence of the Father's glory with exceeding great joy to the only wise God be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And all of Christ's people said, Amen.